Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Brooke Bertzel, and I am the Director of Education and Engagement at McCarter Theater Center. And we are very excited to have you attending, virtually attending this webinar. Um, hello to those of you who are watching through Zoom and also those who are watching through Facebook Live. The event that we are running tonight is called Social Distance in 30 Minutes. And we'll be talking to the authors of Come From Away. So in a moment, I'm gonna introduce um, Irene and David, but before I do that, I just wanted to let you know that this event is coming to you through McCarter's new virtual programming menu called McCarter at Home. We're offering weekly um, events and conversations and performances. So we encourage you to check out our website. Um, the next event that's coming up is on Friday where our artistic director, Emily Mann, will have a conversation with actor Dylan McDermott. That's on this coming Friday at 7.30. You can register for that on our website and some really uh, exciting other um, programming coming up. We're also very excited to announce that we have launched a series of online summer classes for adults and children. So until we can get together again, please continue to join us virtually. Um, because this conversation today is going to be a little shorter we're not gonna take live questions, but I think so many of you who sent in questions and I have those prepared and I hope to get to as many of those as possible. So without further ado, I would love to introduce you to Irene Sankoff and David Hine, the very talented husband and wife creative team and authors of the multi-award winning, I lost track of how many awards this amazing show has, has won, come from away. Nice to see you guys. You too. Hey, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Of course. So where are you quarantining? Where are you coming to us from today? We're in Toronto. We, um, uh, we had been living in New York and we drove back with our daughter and our two cats and whatever we could mm -hmm. grab. And we're renting a place up here and trying to figure out where we'll be in the future. Moving forward. Irene, I was sort of hoping you were you would wear your Canadian Girls Are Cool t-shirt. Oh, right? Like, oh, what yeah. Was the, what was the Mike Myers interview for Inside the Actor's Studio? And I think he like noticed you and called you out. Totally. Yes, he did. <laughs> totally, totally. Good great. So I have a couple of questions and then we have some great questions from people who are attending today. Um, so this is a sort of a general opening question just for those of, of um, the attendees who don't know, can you tell us just a little bit about your individual backgrounds in the arts and, and how you ended up to ultimately become creative collaborators? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah go. go. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I've, I've always written songs, um, but, I, but I have a degree in set and lighting design uh, for theater. And um, while I was in university, um, I, not only did I meet my future writing collaborator and uh, fell in love with her, but um, uh, but I also played in bands uh, constantly there. And so when I left university, I worked in set and lighting for a little while, uh, but also put out albums and toured across the country. And uh, and I'll come back to our collaboration. But yeah, but yeah. Uh, so I was a dancer in high school. I majored in dance. Then I did theater my first year of university. Uh, then I switched to creative writing and psychology, and then I did my master's in acting with Brooke at the Actors Studio Drama School. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, um, I did some acting, did a, a little bit of teaching, just was all over the place. And then uh, between day jobs and night jobs, we never saw each other. So one summer we decided to write a friend show in Toronto together. And, um, and then suddenly we were writers. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It worked. It, uh, we, we thought we'd just spend the summer together by doing our first musical, which was called My Mother's Lesbian Jewish Wiccan Wedding, which is a true story about my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and it, did, it did really well. It got picked up by um, Canadian, the largest Canadian theater producer. And so suddenly we had to quit our day jobs. We were performing in it while we were writing and, uh, and we were suddenly musical theater writers and Come From Away is our second show. So mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing. Cool. Um, a lot of the people who attended or are attending this um, sent in similar questions and it was around the idea of how sort of the journey of Come From Away and how it started as a sort of an idea and inspiration and ultimately had this amazing trajectory and landed on Broadway. I know one of those stops, which is a cool coincidence, was at 
La Jolla Playhouse in San Diego, um, where you it, where it premiered. And the nice sort of connection with that is then managing director of La Jolla, La Jolla Playhouse, Mike Rosenberg, is now the managing director of McCarter Theater. Totally, we love Mike. Yes. Yeah. He loves you too. And he was super <laughs> excited to know I was going to be talking with you and he sends his best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you t can you fill us in on sort of like just the spark of inspiration and then the journey that followed from some birth to growth to life? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of it started uh, because we were in New York, we, because um, yeah. because when you guys were studying, we were there over 9-11. And so uh, our our experience at the time, uh, we were living in a residence for international graduate students. So we were in um, a place that had pe 100 people from 110 countries from around the world. And our, you know, obviously we experienced um, the trauma of it all, but we also experienced our neighbors coming and taking care of us, people using music and theater to survive and come together as a community. And, and, and the moment overcoming all of our differences and you know you could reach out to anyone on the street in New York at the time and and say how are you doing and so when we heard uh, the story about what happened in Newfoundland uh, over 9-11 it really resonated with our experience of people from around the world coming together to take care of one another and we um, we applied for a grant from the Canadian government and we were lucky enough to get it and we headed out to Newfoundland for almost a month and we interviewed everyone we possibly could and came back with just just thousands of stories. Every single person we talked to had had a million stories and each one was better than the next. And we just wrote down as much as we possibly could and then came back with every photocopy of every letter there was, every, uh, you know, every book, every documentary, every website we could find. And we tried to cram it into a hundred minute musical with, with 12 actors. Yeah. And we did it. Sorry, uh, we did it because we loved it. You know, at that point, we yeah, didn't have kids, we were unemployed, and we just fell in love with the story. And we were doing something called the Canadian Music Theatre Project, which did uh, was going to be developing shows. And we thought, oh, great, you know, high schools and universities will be forced to do this show because there's Canadian content. Yeah. We can have a ton of characters, use all the kids. And I was pretty certain it would never make it to the States. I was like, this isn't going to be a story that's going to really resonate. So. Um, yeah, don't take my predictions because you can't <laughs> know what's going on. <laughs> We've been, we were really fortunate to, um, uh, to connect with Goodspeed and get to present it there at a festival, the NAMPT Festival in New York, where we met our, our commercial producers and, um, and Chris Ashley, who's the head of, uh, who's the artistic director of La Jolla Playhouse. And uh, we, a couple workshops later, we ended up starting our, our commercial trajectory, which started in La Jolla went to um, Seattle Rep in Seattle. We went to Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. Uh, we took the show to Gander, Newfoundland, where it's actually set to do two benefit concerts to give back to the community there and, and to really sort of get their blessing. And then to Toronto and then, and then to Broadway. And, you know, from this little show that we, you know, thought, um, you know, high school kids would get forced to do. Um, it's now, it's, I mean, it's not currently, but it's, but it's been seen around the world and, uh, and would have been in China right now. And uh, it's been this incredible journey. Wow, it's amazing. So it seems as if um, the, the con human connection and storytelling is sort of what sparks inspiration in you. And, but I also just want to sort of assess what else is it, how, how do you sort of find that idea or um, inspiration that sort of sparks some interest in you enough to make you want to explore it further and then ultimately write about it? I, I think there's a lot of uh, unexpected humor in the stories we were told. Like there was obviously so much tragedy, but just, um, just how much we, how much time we spent laughing mm -hmm. while we were in Newfoundland uh, with the Newfoundlanders and also with the people who returned to Newfoundland 10 years later. And um, I just, the, and there's this whole idea of like this family, like this really unique bond between these people. And we're like, oh, we want in on that. <laughs> um, and uh, true stories. We, we, we didn't know what our thing was, but I think our thing is true stories. We really enjoy, um, bringing amazing things that have happened to life. Yeah, there's something really wonderful about about being inspired by someone and getting to spend time with them and then reconnect with them and then and then bringing it to a stage to show an audience and hopefully having the audience be similarly inspired and celebrate them for something that they did and it's 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 something that fuels us throughout the 
throughout the whole process is we, we want to get it right for those people. We want them to be celebrated. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's been our goal the whole time. And some, there were some questions from attendees asking how much of the script was actually transcribed from interviews and how much sort of creative liberties did you all take? It all started with transcriptions, yeah, which like was, every, uh, every, you know, tap on the table. And then we were like, oh, okay, we're fixating on that and it, we're losing the storytelling. And, you know, it, people's rhythms of speech are very interesting, but that wasn't what we were trying to present and explore. So we let that go. We started amalgamating characters um, to give them like a fuller journey. Um, we changed everything to present tense. It, yeah. It, there's something, you know, talking to people 10 years later was very different from imagining them in the actual moment. So that, that changed things as well. Yeah. And then just, you know, we met, you know, five people named Diane and it just, it was confusing. For, <laughs> to have them all yes, on stage. Lots of Diane's, lots of Terry's. Lots of Kevin's. <laughs> um, yep. Um, yeah, everything that you see on stage actually happened. It may not have happened to that group of people or to that person, but uh, we we didn't make anything up because every time we did, we were like, why, why are we doing that when something like just as amazing actually happened? So we just kept amalgamating. Um, Beverly's song, Me in the Sky, Captain Bass's song is almost verbatim from her interview, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. Um, she's she's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Just, just kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, but we—that's what we wanted. We wanted Beverly Bass to come and say, "You got my story right." Even if, yeah. even if you know, one thing happened in a different place, or, or you know, a line that someone said came out of someone else's mouth. We wanted them to say, "The spirit of what happened is exactly right," and that's and that's what we wanted them to validate it and say, "That's it, there's a truth in it that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that I think you know." has to come through when you're trying to do a hundred minute musical with 12 actors on a Broadway stage where people are singing. Uh, it, you know, it's, uh, it's not a documentary. And at the same time, it was really important to us to get, to make sure that it was true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as creative collaborators, what is, what does that process look like? How do you work together and share the ideas? Is it just sort of popcorning and how does it evolve into a final script musical? Yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I feel like I should bring my daughter out with her little calico critters so she can act out how we fight when we write. <laughs> I've seen that and can reenact it for you. Um, it's always perfect. Yeah. It's always <laughs> wonderful. Of course. Mm -hmm. Writing, I, I endorse writing with your spouse. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, blank twice for help. Um, so, uh, yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of popcorning. There's a lot of the best idea wins. There's a lot of let's go to our director let's go to um, the music director, let's, let's get a third party in here to kind of break the stalemate. That happens a lot, that ha you know, it, it's, it, it really does. I think there's something, you know, often in musical theater, one person is responsible for lyrics and one person is responsible for the book and one is responsible for the music or, you know, some combination of that. And there's, there's very specific silos. I think because we're married, you know, Partly we can't keep out of each other's business, but um, but it's it's really uh, you know for all of the there, there's a level of conflict just I think in any creative work that that and what's wonderful about that is you have different perspectives and so it makes it a richer experience. But it's also you have to work through things. But at the end of the day, having someone who um, who you love and who loves you and is going to be honest with you and and. Uh, and it's going to tell you when it's when it's not working and 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 is going to work with you to get it to the right place Some, someone who's focused on the same thing you know there's nothing better than that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so M mccarter theater is super um passionate about our offering sensory friendly performances um to our audiences and i know irene and david that's also sort of close to your heart as well and Wondered if you could talk a little bit about your your involvement in that in the past and um, your commitment to that. Yeah, totally. Uh, my nephew was diagnosed uh, with autism the first time I was studying theater, and I actually switched out of the theater program to go into psychology and learn more about uh, what that was. Because back at the turn of the century, it wasn't as in our vocabulary as as it is now. Uh, so it was really important to me here in Toronto. There there had never been. Um, a sensory performance um, at one of the large Broadway size houses. 
So, uh, so for my nephew's 30th birthday, I, that's what I wanted to have happen. Um, because when I saw it in, in New York with, I'm going to blank on the name cause I'm in Toronto and that's what happens. What's the, it's not the red door. The, no, it's okay. the TD, there's a, it's, there's oh, a, TDF, yeah. it's TDF does, um, sensory, um, mm -hmm. aware performances and ah, it, they, it just blew me away. It just blew me away. Like the fidget spinners, the, the, um, the pamphlets they gave out that that told you what was happening, and just just the fact that you could just be there and uh, be however you needed to be, and and also the fact that parents and um, aunts and uncles and friends could actually all come and see a show together because it's it's hard to find somebody to stay with people who are not neurotypical. Sometimes I know it's 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 an issue. I mean, especially right now, it's an issue trying to get things done and make sure everybody's being looked after. Um, so I, it was interesting to see like to, even the parents were um, enjoying themselves. And I think it was one of the first times they got to see a show that wasn't uh, more aimed at kids, you know. Um, it, was joy it was joyous. It was so though. joyous. Just, just like seeing the entire community come together. And, I, I, you know, I think in a lot of those situations, um, you could see family members, you know, nervous when when someone would make a noise or something. And it was just so accepting and so that you know we're all we're all enjoying not only the show but also the community and so and so that's why you know we we were pushing for that to happen in Toronto and and in as many productions as we can and yeah and the funny thing was is my heart, I, we brought our daughter and we spent you know her entire life saying this is theater behavior this is what you do and you do not make noise and she takes it very seriously mm -hmm. so we had to go in and say this is different mm -hmm. and you know it's it's like your cousin and so there's going to be blah 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 so I, we the, said you, you this so is the chance to make noise to, yeah, you can ask what, questions she was the last one in there so <laughs> yeah. there, there was that yeah, she had a lot of questions a lot of questions time. and yeah. then finally i had to be like okay we're gonna just go somewhere else yeah <laughs> that's awesome i'd love to hear that um so talking about these crazy times that we're in um all socially distancing and quarantining and all the craziness how has that impacted your creativity? You've been talking a little bit about you're all sort of stuck in one home together and expected to continue that create creative process in writing. But what is that? Have, what ha, how has that been like for the two of you? It's been tough because um, I think also it's emotionally hard on everybody, and it's hard on uh, young people, and especially if they don't really want to talk about it. So we're finding it hard to break away to be able to actually get things done. Um, it, we can do it, but we don't have the stretch of time that we used to have. And we don't have um, school and friends and other distractions. And there's only so much time I want my daughter on Kids Messenger, you know? So it's it's been tough. It's been tough. And I, I find even like creatively speaking, like it's it's hard to, to think beyond the immediate future. To, so it's like, I, I find my editors instantly in there being like, okay, well, what, what are people going to want to see two years from now? And it's like, I don't know, but you know, you, you, you got to kind of turn that part off. So that's the part I'm working on right now is the turning that part off because, because nobody knows. So it's that, I don't know who said it, but like, if you're writing during this time, you should be doing it for two reasons. It's to save your soul or to save someone else's soul. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where I'm trying to get to, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. I think that's what's been driving us is that, you know, there's a certain sense, we're working on some TV and film projects right now and uh, and there's a lot of questions about when they'll be shot and how and how like and, how, and like how? What, what's, what's yeah. gonna go on. So uh, it, that can be, um, daunting and, mm -hmm. and, and sort of stall, it stalls you. Um, but remembering that, you know, one of the projects we're working on is the Come From Away movie and we're, and, and remembering that, the, you know, this, this, again, this story has inspired us and it's a story about overcoming tragedy. It's a story about coming together, even if we can't come together physically right now, we can come together virtually like this and that we can remember that we are all in this together. And, and there's, there's something about that story that I, that I think is, still relevant and, and resonant possibly even more now that that we want to tell and share with audiences so i think that that helps drive us and remind us the larger picture rather than just i have to fix this scene and address this note and you know mm -hmm. try to drive through is how do we do how do we do good with our art especially in this world right now and then beyond that we're you know i think what's fueling us is uh is also just trying to do some good where we've been um uh 
trying to fund some 3D printing uh, that's happened here so that we can do face shields and deliver um, PPE equipment to, the, to, to different places. We've been trying to do as many fundraisers and, and you know, uh, ways Average to reach out and, and, and raise yeah. money and, and, and try, to, try to help. Uh, you, there's a lot of themes in Come From Away about looking to the helpers to, to feel, um, feel okay about the world, uh, but also that you can also be a helper and you can cheer on the helpers whenever you can. So we're trying to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember what you said, David, about how New York City felt after 9-11 and just that the intense community feeling that you had. Um, and it, it reminds me a little bit of what's going on today, right? It's, it's like, it's the same sort of thing. It's when we're in um, times of trauma, there seems to be a sort of a, a stronger connection among strangers of just have, being all in this together. So yeah. I see some parallels between the two. We were working on shows right after 9-11 and, and they came back and we were like a couple days afterwards and uh, the mayor was trying to get everyone to go back and see theater, but we didn't expect anyone to go back. And, uh, and yet all, you know, all of the yeah. shows were packed and it, it was quieter, but people just wanted to be together. And I think, you know, eventually when we all come back from this, I think it's going to be the same thing. We want to be together. We're social people. We, there's that article about all of our heartbeats um, beating in rhythm when we're in the same theater together, watching the same show. And I think, mm -hmm. I think there's something that we're missing in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this sort of is a nice segue to um, getting to some of the questions that attendees sent in um, and Somebody, let me see who had asked it. Um, oh, uh, Mike from Los Angeles asked, and this is sort of leading at what, what you were sort of talking about, David, how do you think live theater will be impacted in the long term due to the pandemic? I think it's going to be a slow climb back. I, I do. Um, and I think that's, it's just because the nature of the virus. Um, I, I think we're you know, I'm not a scientist, so I, I, I think people are going to be more comfortable uh, when there's uh, vaccines and when we understand about treatments. I mean, it, it's not really reflected in our um, cultural awareness or in the arts, but like thinking about like, and I've been trying to read about this is, as a source of comfort, and it actually works for me this way, but like about the Spanish flu, about mm -hmm. measles, about cholera, about, you know, HIV and AIDS. Like, I mean, this this is different than all of those things, but those things were also different at the time. So just, just know, just, just trying to be patient and being like, we're going to get there and we don't want to do more harm than good, trying to get there sooner than we should. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we're so, especially like us now, like we're so used to getting things like that, you know, whatever we want. So like having to be patient means something completely different than to it, that it would have meant to us 20 years ago. Even. So, um, I think when it is safe to come back, I think it's it's going to come back in a big way. I mean, Broadway had its biggest year before this happened, mm -hmm. um, but I think people need to know that they're safe. Um, mm -hmm. So it's going to be a while, I think. Yeah. Great. I think unfortunately we're probably going to be one of the last um, businesses or venues to be able to open up. But but within that, we're the most necessary, especially in these times, because people are so hungry for stories and human connection. So. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Um, there's a question for you, Irene, um, from Juliet, who's um, right here in New Jersey. She says, how would you say your early training in acting has affected how you approach writing? Oh, uh, I walk through everything. Um, and I think sometimes it drives people a little bit crazy because then, because by trying to act through everything myself, that also means I'm also kind of directing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone's always like just take a step back like just we're with the film right now it's like just just write this down this is the read version this is you don't have to direct the whole thing and plan out all the shots on the paper but like I'm really imagining myself in the space and I'm really um imagining from each character what each character wants and why they're fighting um or, or why they're not fighting or what they're trying to get uh out of out of whatever scene they're in um yeah, it's it's yeah, it's funny. Out of all of the writing I've studied, I, the one thing I did not study was musical theater writing. So uh, it's been it's been interesting to to sort of you know learn the rules kind of quickly on the fly, and then be like, it doesn't apply to the story that we're telling. Hmm. I'm, I'm relying on gut instincts. 
We have a uh, we have a writing tool for for engaging oh, with each other. Richard's class. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. It's, yes. Remember, he used to say to us, "What were you working for, um, and how did it go?" Yep. And uh, we have to do this all the time. Yeah, like, we yes. we use it as oh a God. as a submission process for each other. That it's very different from when you write something and you hand it to the other person and just say, "Hey, can you read this?" It's 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 proved better for us to say, "I wrote this. Here's what I was trying to do." And it's really different to say, here's what I was trying to do. And it's terrible. I hate please every word. Please yeah. help me. Or I love this so much. Just put a stamp on it. Like it's a really different thing. Mm -hmm. or, or I really need your help with this one word or, or, or something to, to help us do that. And also it makes us sit back and think, what was I trying to do? And is it really ready to yeah. share with each other? It, it just gives us a oh second. God. But at the time, I did not understand why we were doing that. <laughs> so I don't even know why I remembered it, but thank God I did. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of similar questions, but I felt like this one sort of summed up all of them. Um, Jacqueline from also New Jersey asked, was there a time when you felt like giving up on writing Come From Away or other projects and what convinced you not to do that? And it's this idea also of what advice do you have for people who are, who are creative artists, creative souls who are struggling to maintain that creativity and inspiration when they're stuck at home? What have you learned and what advice, how would you advise them to move forward? Hmm. Um, it's, it's a tight balance because it's it demand, like writing or acting or any type of creative pursuit demands so much of your attention. And yet I think you have to have a full life beyond that because um, otherwise you're, you're not gonna be able to represent um, you know, humanity if you're, if you're living, unfortunately, you know, very insularly. So that's, it's really hard right now, but I mean, you do have the wonderful gift of the internet for better or for worse. Um, yeah, no, I totally like, I was gonna say like, I mean, have I tried to give up since this morning? Like, <laughs> just like because it's, it's, you know, it, it's hard and, and sometimes, uh, you're, you know, all the feedback you're getting isn't good and you're not sure anything's happening. And so I think it really is, you know, not writing or, or pursuing your art because there's nothing else you can do, but it's because there's so much else you can do, but yet what you want to do is this. Mm -hmm. um, I think that also gives you freedom. I'm a big plan B person. Like I'm a big, like, if you're, if you've got like something else that you could be doing, like I was, I was like, I can always go back and be a teacher. So I was able to say no to a lot of things because I was like, eh, that's not good enough. I don't want to, I don't want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. like, and I guess I was just lucky that eventually something came along that kept going well. But, but I think also we were able to weave through a lot of um, people at the time that probably weren't going to be the best to work with. So mm -hmm. it, it actually served us to have the freedom to be able to do something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, While we were working on Come From Away, there's a lot of gaps in, in between La Jolla and Seattle, in between Seattle and Washington, D.C. And, it, you know, at the time, I think there's a lot of, we, we had no idea it was going to Broadway. We were really excited that we got to go to La Jolla. But at the same time, you know, there was really a sense of, what are we going to do next? And, you know, we, mm -hmm. we've got, are we going to be able to cover our bills? Are we going to build, you know, a, a, along the way? And um, I, those breaks were actually really uh, good in that we, you know, what we had to do in between was we had day jobs and we built an entire community out of those day jobs and those people came to our shows and they supported us and they, and you know, you, you realized that life was not just in the, pe the piece of paper that you were trying to create. It was, it was, and, and that those jobs sometimes fueled like there's lines from your day oh job at the time that are yeah. even come from away yeah. now. Um, when we first did my mother's lesbian Jewish with the wedding, I, I worked at an insurance company and I used the color photocopier and, and all of those people came out to see me play as a singer songwriter. And mm -hmm. so I, so I think there's, there's, there's ways when it feels challenging, it feels like the art isn't working to hopefully remember that the life is just as important and the, and the times when it's not working, you, you invest in the life because it will give back to the art in some way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes a while. Like, I mean, uh, statistically speaking, like we got a successful, like, like a very statistically improbable time for our ages, especially as a woman. Um, mm -hmm. And yet it still happened. So. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'd say is that uh, uh, we did this show, we did Come From Away because we loved the people and the story that we were telling. 
and we loved the people we were working with and we picked people who made us laugh. And uh, even though they said, we don't know if this is gonna go to Broadway, mm -hmm. we were like, well, you know, at least we'll laugh on the journey, at least we'll have fun, at least we'll have each other. And that's not to say that, it, you know, there, there's been challenging moments and it's been hard and frustrating and, and all of that. But I, I think, you know, the point should never be, I'm gonna compromise um, and, and have a horrible experience to get to this this end goal that I think will make me happy. Because we've heard of We've heard of lots of actors who have made it to Broadway and then they're doing the same show for 10 years and they don't actually like the show or the people they're working with. Mm -hmm. And that seems, that's awful. You know, like, it, wouldn't it be better? I don't know, it's a job, but, but you know, it, it feels like if you do a show with the people you love about something you love, then at least you've done something you love. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and, that, and, and from our experience, that's what's made the show successful, not following a rule book, not trying to get somewhere, mm -hmm. not working with the right people or doing things that we made us uncomfortable. It's been, it's been doing something we love. It's amazing. And it really, it's all about the process. It's all about the process. And we are actually at time. So it was, I wanted to just send you um, a big congratulations for all your success, all your well-deserved success. It's been so nice watching you um, sort of go on this journey and we so appreciate you spending some time with us today. It was really nice to see your faces. <laughs> you stay safe. Too. Yeah, stay safe and healthy and stay in touch. You too. Thank, Thank you. you to everybody else who's out there watching. Um, we look forward to connecting with you again until we're able to get together in person. This is what we have. Let's keep connecting virtually. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye.